back to our channel all about BI this is going to be one more video in Azure Data Factory interview question playlist okay we have we have already had three uh, videos in that series this is going to be the fourth one okay so uh, whatever questions that I have come across so far and whatever uh, questions subscribers have asked me or posted in the uh, channel right I'm just going to list them for your reference okay so that you can have this as a, a reference all right so for a few questions uh, i might not give the exact answer but i'll try to touch upon what is needed okay in case you have uh, more details about the questions that i'm giving i request you to post it in the channel or post it in the comment section under this video so that this can be helpful for plenty thanks a lot and let's go to the video all right so this is with respect to data movement okay when we are moving data from source to destination we might have errors in between or we might have a lo lots of uh, uh, scenarios that we want to implement so few of them are listed here which are frequently asked in many interviews okay so the first one is you are loading data from adls or block storage to azure synapse or azure sql table and while you do that uh, is there any function to use to load data from nth row for example you have a, a csv file okay you have around uh, 10,000 records and you want to load from 5th record or 6th record skipping the 4 or 5 records in the uh, front okay uh, do we have any function to do that or not in Azure Data Factory that is one of the questions that uh, I have encountered and uh, lots of subscribers have also asked okay so with respect to Excel source okay uh, I'm stressing it again if you are loading it from Excel source then you have this uh, flexibility to mention the range from which cell to which cell we want to load okay otherwise uh, if you are going to load it from a different source like a, a table or uh, from it another file like csv file or text file then we will have to implement some logic in the data flow activity okay uh, so how do we do that is one idea that i thought of is we can add a surrogate key column in between source and destination and using that surrogate key column we can filter out the rows that we want to filter okay so this is what i thought of and uh, i have also conveyed the same to the interviewers as well so if you have uh, any other better solution i request you to post it in the comments okay going to the second one when loading data from um, lot many files like 100 files or 200 files if there is an issue in between okay i have loaded around 76 files or 56 files i want to uh, i mean after loading 56 files also if there is an error do i have to repeat it from the beginning or not otherwise i have an option to pick up from where i left okay so this was another question um, so with respect to this right uh, in in the link that i have given right microsoft has given answer for this question they say it is possible to rerun the entire flow from the point of failure okay i will post the same link in um, description section as well or you can go through for more details okay i'm not going to touch upon more on this because you find beautiful reference documentation in the link given okay and one more apart from this link right i thought of another solution which is quite uh, uh, easy to implement what i thought is see as and when we load files we have to move it to an archive folder okay in real time scenarios in whatever project i have worked on we used to do that only we don't keep the loaded files in the same source folder or cloud folder okay so we will uh, as and when it is loaded move it to an archive folder or move it to a different folder okay so whenever uh, we do that uh, after some um, failure occurs right if we rerun the pipeline it is going to obviously pick up from where it left okay uh, and apart from this if you want to see some more details request you to go through the link coming to the third one let's say we are loading data from sql db and it has 10 records in the source and job failed after loading eight records how can i rerun the failed job from ninth record so this is also with respect to skipping uh, already loaded records okay in case you have a primary key column you can implement SED type 1 scenario to implement this okay what is SED type 1 uh, if we have already uh, I mean if if the source brings record which is already there it's going to be updated if it is going to bring new records it's going to be inserted okay 
so this 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 is one one of the kind in same scenario uh, scd type one you can um, choose to ignore already present records as well based on primary key okay so you have the flexibility to skip the records which were already loaded or you can update them and insert the records which are not loaded yet okay so this is the answer for or, or uh, this is the um, response that i have given and if you have a better response i request you to post it in the comment section going to the next slide where we had some general scenarios okay apart from the data movement these are some um, uh, frequently asked of general scenario based questions okay so what are your roles and responsibilities in azure data factory um this is one question that i came across from one of my subscribers so what i thought of is see with respect to azure data factory what and all i can think of is uh, initially starting from design perspective and the way we implement the pipeline and the way we monitor the pipeline execution and if at all any issue occurs how do we log it how do we convey it to the stakeholder that is another part and finally devops uh, or um, how do we migrate the pipelines from one region to another region uh, okay so these and or these are all some areas wherein we will have to concentrate and uh, where we'll have uh, some responsibilities as a azure data factory developer okay so this is what i thought of and uh, um, again if you have anything else to be conveyed please let us know all right and how to debug uh, if we have pipeline running for a longer time than expected uh, please ignore the grammatical errors here i have just pasted it um, from the comment section okay so it might have some errors so please ignore that as well and the point is see you have a pipeline uh, running for uh, lots of uh, time okay without throwing any error or without coming to a conclusion as well so how do you monitor it as usual we have to go to the monitor tab in azure data factory pipeline uh, in azure data factory ui uh, wherein you will have on the option to monitor the pipeline execution okay you can have a detailed view of what is being executed where it is stuck every detail you can find it in the monitor tab okay all right as your monitor is one more place where you can have details of the pipeline executions all right all right going to the next what are the top five questions you will ask a business user when starting a new data warehousing project as part of requirement gathering so this is a common uh, scenario this is not specifically uh, with respect to data factory if you are going to work in any ba based project you can have this question asked in the interview okay so you can uh, this question is quite common i request you to google and uh, um, refer some online uh, resources for knowing the answers for it i'm not going to touch it because it's very general okay going on to the next when do you use azure databricks and when do you use adf this is one another question that comes frequently from an interviewer why do you have to use databricks when you can implement stuff in data factory itself okay so the main reason when we go for uh, data bricks is see uh, if you are going to do um, uh, lots of um, data based operations or if you are going to deal with big data then it is recommended you use uh, data bricks instead of azure data factory because if you have lots and lots of operations like you are going to do uh, some filtering some joining some union some uh, uh, some other uh, derived column uh, uh, stuff if you are going to do lots and lots of logical operation in a data flow this is going to make the data flow look complex also it's going to be difficult to maintain and uh, you can offload on uh, some of some portion of the data flow to databricks and you can have uh, the data load part handled in databricks okay so if your uh, i mean if your requirement is to deal with uh, lots of data use databricks otherwise azure data factory itself can do the things that you require okay uh, apart from this if you are going to do something with respect to machine learning or artificial intelligence then it is always good to use or it is uh, recommended to use azure data factory okay so this and all uh, um, came to my mind when i wanted to present the session if you have any other questions i request you to post it in the comment section so that we can take it up in the next session okay thanks for all for watching if you haven't subscribed i request you to subscribe to my channel thank you for those who have already subscribed